Hello and welcome back my friends. You know, if you're a gardener and you're not yet creating and applying compost tea throughout your garden, you're really missing out. I hope to change that today. Compost tea is beneficial to your garden in so many ways for the same reasons that us gardeners love applying compost in the garden to add in nutrients, help build soil tilth, and introduce millions of beneficial organisms like microbes into the garden, which are the little construction workers that break down the organic materials, building up your soil, allowing your plants to better uptake nutrients and become more resilient to pest and disease to grow the healthiest, most abundant crops. So when we're brewing up a batch of compost tea, what we're able to do is take just a small amount of compost or worm castings and proliferate those beneficial organisms, those microbes to spread throughout the garden. So we could take it from millions of microorganisms to billions in just a short amount of time with just a couple steps. Now I've shared with you in the past how you can make a PVC bubbler that can fit in a 30 gallon trash can to brew up a 25 gallon batch of compost tea. And this is a nice little system here but it does require quite a few pieces and making quite a few cuts. So I've come up with a way to simplify the process of creating your bubbler using an old garden hose, which most folks have on hand. So here I've got an old garden hose that at some point just had too many bursts in the line, but I'd encourage you to never throw out your old garden hose. There's so many different ways that you can utilize this in the garden. Is One way I like to use them is to cut small sections and run through some wire, some rope, what have you and use it as plant ties to help to straighten up plants that might be leaning a little bit too far to one side or just need a little added support. As you can see, I've done this here on my persimmon tree to get it straightened up. And this just allows you to easily create a support system where you can use pretty much any rope, cable, tie, whatever you have, that smaller diameter material from actually cutting into the bark of your tree. At times, the tree will even grow around it. It can be very damaging. Anyway, we better jump into the build. It's actually raining just a little bit today. Just a bit of drizzle. All right, so all you need to do is cut about an eight foot section of your old hose. And you could absolutely use a section of new hose for this as well. Now, if you're able to utilize a section of hose that has one of the ends on, preferably the female, then you'll be able to save a few bucks on these next steps. All right, so we got our eight foot section of hose here. Now this air bubbler is customizable in that it can coil up into different sizes. So you can actually fit it into a five gallon bucket or a 30 gallon trash can or rain barrel. Now for this example, we're gonna start off with this female end here and call this the bottom of our bubbler. And we're gonna drill a series of holes about two thirds of the way up the hose, about one inch apart. So this last one third section here towards the top will leave hole free as it's not gonna be submerged under the water. Okay, so we've got our holes drilled in the hose. That took all but a minute. So here's where the trick comes in. This is a four gauge aluminum bendable metal. This is rust proof. What we're gonna do is insert this through the center of the hose. So you can buy this stuff in bulk. You can get a 32 foot spool for around 20 bucks. That comes to about 65 cents a foot. So for eight feet worth, we're looking at about a little over $5. So we'll just start inserting. And you just push that wire all the way through till it starts to protrude out the bottom. Now we can just cut that off. And now we got a piece of hose that we can easily conform. And this will create a much more moldable structure that we can conform into the shape of bubbler that we need. So now all we need to do is mend up the hose. I'm gonna be installing a female hose mender. This has a 5 8 inch barb. You're going to want to make sure you're using a 5 8 inch inner diameter hose, which is pretty much the standard. And it can be helpful if your hose has this little extra flap of rubber to pull a little section of that out of the way. 
like that which is going to allow for a better seal so we got that compressed down now we can just tighten down the hose clamp and there you have it now on this bottom end i'm just going to cap it which is why i have two female ends but like i said if you have a male end on one side of your hose you can get a cap that fits on the outside so there that ends all sealed up now and we've now got a completed bubbler now let me show you you can get this down into a five gallon bucket and it'll fit in just like that or we can use a larger vessel like this 30 gallon trash can and again just mold it around and then just bend that top part of the hose over the lid to hold it up. This isn't rigid enough to stand up on its own, so it needs a little bit of support. The metal just makes it easily moldable and pliable. So I'm gonna use this trash can as the example today. I'm just gonna now hook up an air pump to the inlet here. And this is an active aqua 60 watt commercial air pump. I've actually got two of these. My original has lasted many years it's holding up beautifully. This is a quality air pump, and this is going to produce enough airflow to create tremendous aeration in either one of the 5 gallon or the 30 gallon container vessel. So here's my older version of the pump, and it has a 3 8 inch barb on there. So we're going to attach some vinyl tubing to this, and we only need about 3 foot worth of this just to get the pump up to the connector point here. When you buy this in bulk at 100 feet, you get this for about 37 cents a foot. So we're looking at around a dollar's worth of tubing here. This has many applications throughout the homestead. And we're going to attach this with a little steel clamp. So that just press fits over. And tighten the clamp nice and snug. And now to connect this to the hose here, I got this little gadget. This is a 3 quarter inch garden hose thread to a 3 8 inch hose inner diameter barb. That's just going to fit right inside the tube. So we'll screw this in to the female hose end here. And there's a rubber gasket inside here, hoping to give you an airtight seal. You could wrap a little bit of pipe threading as well around the threads. And although you could just press fit this on, this is a powerful air pump. So we want to further secure it again with a clamp here. All right, so we're all set up here now. As you can see on the hose, we've got our last hole about right there, which is good. No point in having holes up here when the water level is gonna be about right there. But we are now ready to brew, so we're just gonna fill up our vessel here with some water. And here is your setup. You're ready to start brewing. Now I'm gonna lift this up a little bit to show you. So you're getting bubbles all the way down the hose. It's hard to see once you submerge it more. One of the best things about this setup and this pump is just how quiet it is. Very silent overall. Now, if you are using tap water with chlorine chloramines, you can add in just a small amount of vitamin C crystals to help to neutralize the chlorine and chloramines. And no, more is not better. Just about an eighth to a quarter of a teaspoon for a 30 gallon vessel like this is appropriate. Now to brew up a batch of compost tea, you only need three ingredients, compost, or worm castings, which is what I'm using today, some liquid kelp, and some molasses. The kelp and molasses are the food source for the microbes in the compost tea that we're proliferating. Then you're gonna need a brew tea bag. I love to use a larger size rather than a smaller size, just easier to work with. I believe this is a 400 micron. I'll leave a link to these bags and some of the other components to this build in the description box below. And the liquid kelp that I'm utilizing today is actually a blend it contains fish emulsion in it too. This is awesome for your compost tea. And I just like to put a nice amount in here, not really measure it out. This bag's running low, so we'll just dump most of it in there like that. And this bag comes with a nice toggle, so you can loop it off at the top there. And there's a number of ways you can attach the bag to the brewer. I'm just going to use this two foot bungee cord here. See that actually clips right into the handle. And I'm just going to tie off this extra rope here. And we can secure this 
with a large binder clip so we don't lose it down in the compost brewer. Now for the liquid kelp and molasses, you want to use approximately two tablespoons per five gallons of water. We've got about 25 gallons of water in here, so that comes to about a half cup of each. I'm just going to eyeball that out. And about a half cup of molasses. My molasses thickened up on me, but it will dissolve in the water. And that's all there is to brewing up your very own batch of compost tea, my friends. Now we can just slap a loose fitting lid on top just to keep wildlife, bees, and other insects out of our brew. And if you can maintain a temperature around 70, 75 degrees Fahrenheit, that would be ideal. The lower you are in temperature, the longer you're going to need to brew to get the same results. But generally speaking, about 24 hours, your brew is going to be ready. And once you turn off the air pump, you only have about seven hours to use all of that liquid before the microbes die off. And you can disperse this throughout your garden using a transfer pump or a sump pump. I've shown you examples of that in the past. I'll link those videos down below so you can check it out. You can dip your watering can in here. You can full your feed the leaves of your plants with a pump sprayer. You can do a root drench. You can go full strength or you can dilute it even further with non-chlorinated water 10 to 1 to make it stretch even further. But if you think this is going to be too much for you, you can go down to the five gallon bucket size, use the same hose, the same pump setup, and you're going to get amazing results. Anyway, my friends, that's how you get things going with just an old piece of garden hose, a few other components. Hopefully you've got a few of those items laying around. And I just want to remind you, my friends, when I do share with you some of these ideas, I hope that you make them your own. Perhaps you've got a few different ideas from this build and you can implement, adjust it to fit your own needs with item supplies that you have on hand i'm a big fan of keeping things low cost affordable but just remember whenever you put together a project like this it is no doubt an investment and you're most definitely going to receive an abundant return for the effort so that's going to do it for now my friends i sure do appreciate you tuning in today if you found this video helpful or entertaining in any way be sure to smash the thumb button for me if you haven't already consider subscribing to the channel new uploads every week sometimes every day and i'm always giving you updates on all the different things growing on around here so with that thanks for watching have yourself a good one until next time this is dan from plantabundance.com take care i'll be talking to you again soon